Traditions is back, y'all. And this year, we're getting wild. Dog jumping competitions, hog barbecues, and I'm starting my professional archery career. It's a slow start, but we're getting there. I missed all together. Come join us on our bus tour through the South on this season of Traditions. South Louisiana is full of swamps, gators, and ducks. I went down there to hang out with Justin Martin from Duck Commander to learn the intricacies of duck hunting, chat about life, maybe even build a duck call. For Academy Sports and Outdoors, I'm Marty Smith, and this is Traditions. Here I am, but where am I? You're in the big town of West Monroe, Louisiana. West Monroe, Louisiana. Now, is this the world famous Duck Commander headquarters that this, I'm staring at? This is it. It's everything you thought it I is. I mean, Ain't it's the big... most majestic palace I've ever seen. <laughs> big giant metropolis. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do? First, while it's nice and cool out, so we're going to go to the duck hole. We're going to look around, show you what North Louisiana is all about come November to the end of January. And then we'll come back here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you to work. We I, got duck calls to build, so I'm gonna teach it. you how to build a duck call. I know you got the talent to do it. So these hands oh, look like beautiful, beautiful look artistic instruments. Beautiful. We're gonna put some calluses right about there from putting them together, taking them apart. You're gonna take a few apart because you're gonna screw a few of them up, but that's fine. It's a learning process. Yeah. Once you get it down, no problem. All right, let's do it, man. Let's hit the duck hole. Let's get out in the woods and have some fun. So we are just east of Monroe, out here in the Delta. You notice it's flat as a pancake. Sure is. And when you get into flat areas like this, that means a duck hunt's pretty good, generally. So this is all a big rice farm, and a duck, much like myself, loves rice. So I think that's part of just being from Louisiana, though. I mean, it goes on forever. <laughs> Don't it, though? Here is the camp. We are here. Love it. That's a swampy looking thing, ain't it? Sure is. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fall in. That's my slice of heaven there. <laughs> so give me an overview of all the high points of the preparation that's necessary to get ready for duck season. It opens generally like this year here, it opens November 21st. If you wait till November 21st, that, that ain't the way to do it. Like duck season for us is year round. We let the ducks have it from February, March, and April. Uh, to just let them relax and all that. Don't see any humans, like, just be ducks. And then after that, we get out here and we start working. To me, that is as much fun as actually hunting the ducks. When you're young, you just want to hunt and have fun and yeah, all that. Of course. You know, I've been chasing ducks now for 25 years. I started when I was 10 years old. Now, the least important thing to me is the hunt. It's, it's the work that goes into it, and it's who I get to share the woods with. The community. The Absolutely. The brotherhood, the brotherhood, whatever you want to call it. I hear all the time interviewing college football coaches, process over outcome. If you prepare really well, then once you get to game day, you're just playing free. Yeah. It's the same thing you're talking about. Second nature. All that preparation you guys are doing the entire year to get to November 21st. Once you get to November 21st, it's like, look, we're ready. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's go get let's in the boat. On this boat. Yeah, let's. I want you to show me around. Let's go take a the, ride. Some of the hot spots. Working. Keep your hands and feet inside the boat at all times. <laughs> Duck hunting clearly means a lot to Justin. Yeah, baby. But heading out into the swamp is when I began to realize just how important it is to him. This man is obsessed. Here we are, Marty. We're kind of out here in the middle of the place. You can see these old scattered cypresses and all that. Like that spot right there is a place we stand and hunt a lot because you got a lot of cover. But you see like right out here, there's lily pads everywhere, but there aren't any right there. And we do that to encourage the growth of this coontail moss because what'll happen is them lily pads will get so shaded out that that coontail won't grow. Well, that right there is what the ducks come in here to eat. Okay. And you know, again, we're just trying to provide these things with food uh, all year round, take care of them. And, and we get a little reward from getting to hunt them. I, I, I always say life is context and repetition. Yeah. Obviously, if you've been doing it since you were seven, eight, 10 years old, you've had that repetition, but you know everything. I mean, we're riding out here on the boat and you're like, oh, there's a black 
belly <laughs> spotted white bellied mallard or whatever it was you said oh black belly whistling yeah about. how is that home it's just something that has always fascinated me and i just kind of took it upon myself to study it learn it because i wanted to be better I, I i think at the end of the day however much time you devote to your craft you know it pays off let's go ride and i'll go show you what one of these old timber blinds look like this is a regulation Louisiana duck blind there in front of us. It's like the Taj Mahal of duck blinds. <laughs> we got cypress slats from a sawmill and just tried to make it look like a wall of trees. So we use the actual outside skins of the cypress tree. There's enough room to pull your boat up in there behind it. You got a little roof over your head. When the ducks get in there, boom, 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 boom. Everybody high fives, has a good time. <laughs> and, and then you watch your dog go out there and get them and bring them back to you. And, you sit there and you do that till you've had enough of it. This is a reservoir style. We'll take a ride. We'll go back there in the big trees, the big green timber that, that duck hunting is so famous for. And then we'll also go look at a pit blind out there in a the rice field. So that kind of is like your three styles. What's your favorite? Them big trees. Big trees, okay, the big good. Big trees, yeah. Good. The start of duck hunting was done in those big green timbers before everything was cleared and made into farmland. So there's just something kind of nostalgic about being in there and watching them, them big old green-headed mallards come down through them trees. It's, uh, it's, it's a sight to behold. Well, here we are. The old sweet home. There's a lot of memory space taken up in my brain because of this spot right here. This will all be about shin deep in water. And then depending on the wind, we'll pick whichever side of the hole to hunt. Yeah, I was telling you earlier about my dad passing. When I got that phone call, I was by that big oak tree right there. And I didn't come back in here until the last weekend of duck season. And my buddy let me come in here by myself. And I just wanted to come in here and make peace with everything that had happened. And uh, the last duck of the season, a pair of mallards come in here for me, and I just raised up, boop, boop, and I knew right then I was done. I didn't have my six ducks, didn't care. When they come in the decoys, I said, that was dad, because I knew that was the closure I needed on duck season and everything that happened. I'm trying not to get too, too caught up in it, but. It's okay if you do, man. Yeah. I carved JM in that tree for Jerry Martin. It'll always, always be a spot I can go back to. Man, there's been so many memories in here. But all those things, being outside, being in nature, there's a, there's just something about it. There's something that you can find there that you can't find anywhere else. I had to do it with a shotgun shell because I didn't have a knife with me. So it may have grown back in and faded in, but I know, I know right where I whittled it. I gotta bring in a regulation pocket knife. But that's pretty good for a shotgun it shell to still really hold the good. M. I mean, I sat here and did it. She can still see the M right there and the, the J right there above it has kind of grown in. But, but I can assure you, there's been way more laughs oh, shared sure. here than there have tears. And it's a cool thing when you got a place that you can always come home to. This little high spot of weed should be it. There she is. Boy, you ain't gonna be able to see much. <laughs> ah. Oh yeah, wow. There's a lot that could be going on down there, <laughs> bud. Basically what you do is you get out here, you dig your hole, you get the blind as level as you can with the ground. And you'll be in here and then when the ducks come in, you know, this is a south wind spot. So you got a south wind coming like this. You got your decoys out here. And when the ducks come in, they don't ever know you're here. Uh, use the use the ground and the terrain to your advantage. Be good to go. How do you determine where to put it? We sit, so the camp is not far from this spot, which is a good thing. So we'll sit up there and watch. And we just, we try to put them where the ducks are already going. like. Give it a couple of years, and if they do the same thing for two or three years with nothing there, put it right there, because that's obviously where they want to be. And a lot of times, the elevation, there'll be a natural little low spot there that would hold water regardless. And somehow, 
he's flying over the top and he knows that hmm. and can see it and feel it. This is kind of North Louisiana duck hunting. You've, you've seen like the three things we do, but I think now we'll, we'll head back to the office and, and show you show you what got us to where we're at today. You know? I appreciate you bringing me out here. I learned so much and not only did I learn so much about actual duck hunting and the practice that comes with being good at it, but also your vulnerability and learning your story and all those things. Uh, amazing, and yeah. I appreciate you. We'll get back, go through some duck calls, teach you that. I can't wait to hear you. We'll... It's all to be... Everybody's first time is fun. This That's, ought to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> this is Duck Hunter Mecca I'm sitting in right here. Well, you can see a lot of them come here and put their names all over the tables. and. You think I should do that? You can if you want to. I mean, I, you know, I don't recommend putting your phone number unless you want weird phone calls, but you know. But this person didn't care. But this is where, for a long time, we built all the duck calls it's really right small. here. small. It is, isn't it? TV made it look a lot bigger. Yeah. But we got a little smarter. We bought a building down the street, and that's where we make the duck calls now. Down there. Every one so, of them's handmade. Every one of them is hand assembled hand now, assembled okay so like a lot of them like the one i'm gonna show you how to build is my favorite called it's called a cut down because this the end of this thing right here is cut off instead of being a straight taper but to assemble it no problem it's super easy you just take a reed put him flat against the bottom here and then you'll put your wedge right on top and you'll see it'll have a little yeah, line yeah. on it put the line down and then you'll take this guy and you're just going to shove him home put them together and then you got to test them to make sure they sound right so i'll show right. you i need a tutorial okay well it should sound something like this <laughs> now i'm gonna tell you i make it look pretty easy <laughs> and it's not difficult but it takes a while it takes practice it takes a it takes a lot of time in your pickup truck because if not, your wife will kick you out because she gets tired of. But so you, what? Am, now am you do I, have to turn it around. That one ain't ever gonna work that way. Like it goes like this. There you go. Okay. Now, well, and then like, we'll just, like I'm blowing a trumpet. A trumpet? Did you okay. play the trumpet? No. Oh, because I'm gonna say if you played the trumpet, you got a head start. Okay. So you're tight lipping. That that works to get pressure, but that's not the best way to get pressure. So. What I do is I put my bottom lip on the bottom of the call, and then I take my top lip, and I'll have it about halfway over this. So it gives you a pretty good airflow. Okay. And then just, you want to imitate saying 10. You can't really just like say 10 or that. Okay, you got to open that hand. You like a chicken now. And the number one thing they break, when you're bad, that don't mean blow louder. That, 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 just, <laughs> that just gives you a head up. That, that's just, that's, that just. I love it. I love people's first time. But look, once you get used to it, you can do all kinds of tricky things on it. You can. Wow. It's like a remix. You can do all kinds of stuff with them once you, once you get used to it. Oh, well, that one's yours. Keep it. Practice I'm going to keep it. it. I'll practice. I appreciate uh, you showing me how to build it and uh, how, how not to blow in the wrong end. There's another little thing we do in this room now. It's, it's called a podcast. You mind, stick, you mind sticking around? I'd love to. Be honored. That's awesome. Heck my, yeah. My buddies might actually think I'm cool for once. <laughs> <laughs> you think they, don't, they don't care about all my podcasts. They, they care about y'all's. Oh, hey, man. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, you, Mark. It, this has been a fun time. day, man. Amazing Let's time. Y'all, I never realized the lengths one man would go just to get a duck. But to Justin, it's about much more than that. He's providing for the ducks, providing for his family, and his fellowshipping with his buddies. I was really honored to visit his dad's tree with him, a special spiritual place they both share now that his father has passed.